Hello, and welcome to the Open Virtual Film Project. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a runtime packaging setup using the runtime packaging setup tool in the OVSP plugin. The first thing we want to do is make sure we have the correct input setup. To do that, open the OVFP plugin menu and click on the green wrench to open the resources folder. Inside of the resources folder, you want to go to VR runtime config file, and there's this default input.ina file inside of here. Copy that file, go to where your project exists, and paste it into the config folder overwriting if necessary. This will overwrite any inputs that you already have in your project. So if you're using another game mode, it might be better to edit each of these in a text editor and copy the differences from the VR runtime config file into your current input file. With that done, we want to do a little bit of setup inside the environment that we want to package. The first step is open the environment and turn on any levels that you want to be visible in your packaged game. If you want one of your levels to be toggleable, hide it for now. And then make sure you have a player start in your scene. If you do not have one, you can go to the place actor section and drag a player start into your scene. I will generally put the player start in the persistent level. Now open up the OVFP menu either from the drop-down or the toolbar button. If you want to be able to teleport between various different bookmarks in your scene, you can go into the bookmarks section and add a few bookmarks. I'm going to add two, one at each end of this hallway, and you can rename them however you wish. The tool will also work with any editor interactable objects, like those shown in a different video in the playlist. Once we're done with all of that, we're going to come to the Runtime Packaging Setup button, choose a logo for the show that we're working on, choose a directory in which to package our build, with the triple dot file explorer, and then we can click the setup to package current level button. It might screw with your scene a little bit visually. To fix that, you just need to invalidate the viewport by turning on and off your sub levels. However, it will not make any difference to the packaged project, and the next time you open this level, it will already be set up. With the setup done, if we wanted to set up any overrides to the default tools, the fly speed, or the use of the menu button, we could do it here, and then copy this ini fail to the package directory. I'm going to do that and show you how to use it later, and we are good to close the packaging setup and save our environment. One of the things that this tool did was spawn this BP OVFP VR override per level object, which has a pile of overrides we can play with, the first of which is this bookmarks in order section. If we click the plus mark, we can choose which bookmarks show up in our tool and in what order they show up. We have the option to change our splash screen image, give the environment a different name, whether or not to start with the control help open, which is this menu here. So if I set control help to on, when you open the runtime game, it will show up in this configuration. And if I set it to off, when you open the runtime, it will look like this. There's an option to toggle on or off the VR menu buttons in case you have an experienced VR user and want to give them a little bit less control, as well as the ability to cycle between various different level states. So if I wanted to be able to turn on this SL tutorial doors closed version one, I could type the name of the toggleable level in this field here and give this state a name. If I wanted to turn on multiple levels at a time with this level states, I could add a comma and do a second name. And then it is frequently useful to give a none section. And now when I go into play mode, I can cycle between the various different level states that I set up with the L and the K key. If I'm having issues with levels not turning on or off, I want to double check this SL tutorial doors closed version one in my levels browser has a blue dot next to it. If it does not, I can right click it, change streaming method to blueprint. The next option also gives you a bit of toggle ability in your set that I generally use for blue screens. So if I have an actor out in the scene, I give the actor tag blue screen with capital B. When I go into mode, I can hit the B key and it'll turn on and off. This blue screen hidden at start toggle will determine whether or not when I go into play mode, these objects tagged as blue screen will show up by default or not. Then the last section involves spawnable objects where I can add to this section, give an object a name, link it to a, a mesh. If it is a skeletal mesh, I can link it to some animation data. And then link to an image file that serves as the thumbnail. Then when I go into play mode, I will be able to go to the spawn tab and drop one of those objects out in the scene in front of me. See, it just dropped my cube out into the scene. Once I'm happy with all of the setup that I have done inside of my scene, I can hit file, package project, Windows 64, and it should drop me in that builds folder that I set up earlier. I'm going to hit select folder and wait for it to finish packaging. 
once it's finished packaging, it will have created this Windows No Editor folder. And earlier when I created my INI file, it dropped my INI file in the same main folder. I'm going to Control X, cut my INI file, go into the Windows No Editor section, and then the name of my project, and then paste my INI file there. Now to open the project, I can double click this classproject.exe, and it will open a standalone copy of the level that I've been working on. You'll see my logo is in the top left hand corner, and I have my control help up, showing me all of the different keys that are available to me. If I click the start and fly mode button, I have WSAD QE movement just like the editor, and I can use any of the controls shown in this help menu. If the help menu is not showing up, then the H key will hide and unhide it, and the M key will drop you in and out of the menu. In another video on the playlist, I'm going to be going over all of the functions available to you in this mode. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.